All right, so welcome to part two. As you saw here that we were not able to to ping even though we put the correct IP address. So let's just let's just go back and um and troubleshoot. All right. So we could um do the X out. Let's come to the IP address. Uh-huh. 10 10 20. Now, all right. Notice we we have actually configured 10 10 120. So somewhere along the line we missed that. I'm sure a lot of you guys are screaming, "No, no. Don't um don't do that." You know, but I mean, I couldn't hear you. So Actually, it's 10, 10, 1, 20. So it was pretty much the operator's fault, but it was my fault. Now, let's try pinging. Now, voila, you notice we're able to ping with no problems at all. We can also try to ping the other sub-interfaces that we have there, which was 100. And notice, we're getting ping from 100. These are the sub-interfaces, by the way, that we have configured on the router. We could go and try to see, can we ping 110? So we can ping all our sub-interfaces with no trouble at all. Let's jump on our router and just look at those configs again. So to do that, we would um, show run on our router. And if we show run, we see all our sub-interfaces here. And these are the sub-interfaces that we're able to ping. All right, we just tested it from our server and we were successful in pinging all of those. So now, what we need to do, we need to go on our server over here, which is our DHCP server, and we need to configure the um, the DHCP scopes for the the um, the data VLAN and the voice VLAN. Let's do so quickly. So we go under DHCP and um, let's add a new pool. So to add a pool, we're going to call this, let's say, the voice. And for the voice pool, the start IP address will be 10.10 .10, and it's 110 and the subnet mask and we'll be starting issuing IP address from um, from 10 right and I add that also for our data VLAN we'll start issuing from 100 and the subnet mask is 255 and we'll add that also and let's just verify that it's there so we have the voice and we have the the data alright no trouble at all we did we did not specify any DNS we did not specify we we also need to specify the, the default gateway so while we're on the voice let's do that the default gateway is going to be 10 dot 10 dot 110 because of course we need to tell um, we need to specify we need to specify to the devices how they're going to be able to get to other networks. So again it's 10.10.110.1 and we're going to be saving it and we go to our data network and we need to do the same thing. So it's 10.10.100.1 and we'll save that also. So right. So we have our voice network 10.10.110.1 the data is 10.10.101 and we see the different um, networks and the IP address and the subnet mask that we're using and pretty much we should be very much okay there so let's go on our switch and we're going to try this PC first this PC that we have here it is on I will tell you it's on FA04 so let's get on our switch and we're going to get into interface FA 0 slash 4 and once we go in there we'll type switch port access VLAN and this is a data VLAN so it's 100 that's now part of VLAN 100 you notice it um it's now trying to connect to VLAN 100 once we do that the port is going to shut down and it's going to come back online and it's going to try to learn the MAC address of the um, of the PC that's connected to it now we will go into this interface here. Look at this interface. Look at the difference. This is interface FA01. So let's get back on our switch again. But notice this FA01. It has a PC and it has a phone connected to it. And there's some difference in the way we need to configure this. So now we will go interface FA0 slash 1 and we're inside there and we'll do switch port 
access VLAN and that's data VLAN is 100 and again we will do switch port voice VLAN 110 all right so it has VLAN information for voice it had VLAN information for for data again on FA01 notice what we did we went into FA01 we specified the VLAN the data VLAN and we also specified the voice VLAN all right let's do or let's do the other um, the other port I don't know what sports it is, so let's just highlight it and look at it that's FA02 so if we go in FA02 now we will go interface FA0 slash 2 will do switch port access VLAN 100 and that's for the PC switch port voice notice it's not access it's voice VLAN 10 alright so we did that we will now come down to this port here which is FA6 all right, so let's go again. We're going to do it again. It's interface FA0 slash 6, and it's switch port voice VLAN is 110. Because this case, we don't need to do an access VLAN. There is no data equipment connected to it. It is just the voice equipment, and that is what we did. All right, so we will... Um, I'll just take a look at it again just to make sure and now let's start looking at our equipments we will go to the PC and if we go to this PC and we go to config we go to desktop notice that it's set for a static IP address and let's just do DHCP and see if it requests it's requesting one alright the DHCP services fail I am not sure why it fails so let's just take a look at it all right, so let's take a look at this. Um, for some strange reason, it is not issuing a DHCP address, and everything looks good. So let's just go. Let's um, go back to DHCP and request an IP address. And it's not okay. It fails. All right, so we know that our data VLAN is supposed to be ten ten one hundred zero. All right, so it's we're going to put a static IP address in it to see what's going on. So it's ten. Dot ten, dot one hundred, dot ten. Subnet mask is supposed to be two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero, and the gateway is supposed to be ten dot ten dot one hundred dot one. All right, so we're good. So let's go to the command prompt and let's do some pings. All right, so if I do ping ten dot ten dot 120.1 oh lord again that's ping 10.10.100.1 we're getting a reply we're also getting a reply from 120.1 alright alright so this is um all right, so now we see that we're getting a, a reply. So the only thing that's not working is DHCP. Let's put it back to DHCP and see what happens. It is still not giving us an IP address. Now, however, if we go over to one of four phone devices, heh, if you notice, the phone device is giving us an IP address. This one got 1010, 1010.13. This one also has 10101010 and this one has 10101011. Let's throw another phone equipment in there and see if we're going to get another IP address. All right, we have to remove that phone. I chose the wrong equipment. Um, isn't this great? We could actually sit here and troubleshoot this together. Um, let's just go ahead and we're going to go from one of these ports 7 and we're going to connect to switch and if we go to switch we have to go into interface FA0 slash 7 and we'll have to do switch port voice VLAN is equal to think it's 110 alright so we have that again 
let's see what happens if we do get an IP address from that. <clears throat> but, so we know that it is issuing IP addresses, and let's look at that. Um, it didn't get an IP address yet, but let's let's just see what happens. It's probably going to take a little time. But let's go on and look at our router. If we look at our router and we do show run, let's go down to our interfaces. We know that the phone or the, the voice VLAN is issuing IP addresses and the voice VLAN is 10.10.1.10.1 and the IP helper statement is 10.10.1.20 right you see that look at the data that's wrong 10.10.2100 that's why it's looking to a DHCP server that does not exist so what we need to do we need to go into config T interface FA Zero F A zero slash zero. How many of you guys saw that before and were trying to tell me? Yeah, because when I was typing that in, obviously I typed the wrong IP address in. So it's F A zero slash zero dot one hundred, and I'm under that interface, and I'll have to do. Let's do this. I'm just being lazy here, so I'm going to go copy, and I'll just do no. That's how you negate the command, by the way. I do no IP helper address and remove that information then I'll change it to the white the correct one the one that's supposed to be and I'll just remove the no from before it so the IP helper address should be 10.10.1.2100 and we'll go do, um, control Z and again I'll just do show run and if I go down and now I have the correct IP helper statement there which is the IP address for DHCP server so if we go back over to one of our machines that we were having problems with and we go to configuration we look DHCP requesting requesting voila it got a DHCP address successfully let's go up to one of our other machines up here and we look it got 11 so it's working like a charm we go over here and we look at another one this one is on static let's change it to DHCP Voila, it got 12. So everything is working just like we expected. Our new phone that we introduced got IP address 10.10.110.12, if you notice that. So now, just to do a recap of everything that we covered in this video. Starting in, um, in movie one, that's the first part of the video, we actually put together our network. We created our VLANs, which is three VLANs. We created a data VLAN 100, a voice VLAN 110, and a server VLAN 120. On our router, we created three sub-interfaces. Those sub-interfaces represent the routing points for the data VLAN, the voice VLAN, and the server VLAN. We also specified the, um, the encapsulation, which we're using dot one q and we specified the VLAN numbers for each VLAN which is 100, 110 and 120. On our switch we go into the interface that is connected to a routing point and um, we configured that to be a trunk port again leveraging dot one q and we created the different VLANs on our switch and based on the equipment or the device that's connected to the endpoint of our switch we specified what VLAN they needed to be in. In this case for our equipment that are connected using both a telephone and a, um, and a PC, what we did specify, we specify a data VLAN and we specified a voice VLAN. And we realized that even though both equipments are connected to the same link, same points, they got IP addresses from different VLANs, from different network. And it's evident by looking at this phone here where we see we got an IP address of 10, 10, 1, 10, 1, um, 10, 10, 1, 10, 10, and our PC, which is connected to the to the endpoint of the phone, has got 10, 10, 111. So it came across in different um, different VLANs, and we noticed we could actually ping do pings across our network. So if we go in this PC and we did 10, that work. I think that's a phone on the network. I'm not sure, but we can do pings all across our network, and we're successful in doing that. The first couple of pings time out but after that it should pick up so right now 
we should be able to, to communicate with all the devices on our network. I hope you, you did learn something from my video and stay tuned for much more. Again, if you're coming in to see part two, this is part two. There is part one available out there and part one started the, um, the whole config and part two finished it up. Because of um, the limitation of the 15 minutes with YouTube, I had to split this up into, um, into separate videos. I hope this was you know, very informational for you and I hope you'll join me for more interesting videos. See you soon.